Good afternoon and welcome to Corpus Christi uh, Church. Happy New Year to all of you. So we begin today's service in honor of the Mother of God. She is indeed the Mother of God, the Mother of our world, the Queen of the Universe. And we honor her in a special way as we begin this new year. Um, just as a reminder that, um, you know, if you have electronic devices, please silence them. And also, if you would kindly place your offerings in the baskets in the back of the church on the tables right there, okay? And I'll ask you to please rise and we'll begin our opening call song. Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We celebrate a very important dogma of the church. It is the first dogma concerning Mary. There's four of them, but the Mother of God is the first one. It's a very important one, and of course we do it in conjunction as we uh, with the new year. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, we call to mind ourselves. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my word, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salva <coughs> salvation. Grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. 
the Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and, he, and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Amen. Response Soil Psalm. May God bless us in his mercy. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. <clears throat> may the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It is from the Gospel of Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, welcome to our beautiful parish here. A um, couple of things I want to mention to you. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will resume following this Mass. I will uh, uh, we'll close the curtains over there and, and, and unveil the sacrament, so you're welcome to go as late as you want tonight, especially as we pray for a new year. Yesterday, um, excuse me, tomorrow, 
uh, we will have adoration as well. So we are getting stretched thin for some reason or other. A lot of people are not showing up. We're not sure if a lot of people are on vacation or away, but it's getting pretty shallow, very thin during the afternoon, sometimes for hours. So I don't know if people are away or people are just um, sick or something, but uh, we want to kind of maintain that. And if you do go to adoration, you want to do multiple times, you're more than invited to do it multiple times, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, was one of the things I needed to mention too, very important, and I now have forgotten it. Must be the sign of old age. <laughs> I guess I forgot it, maybe it's not important. <laughs> okay. All right, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Well, again, a happy new year. I'm, I'm, I, uh, um, I'm hoping it will be a good year for all of us. Mary, may, may Jesus, Mary, and Joseph bless you all with peace and prosperity this new year. There was a cartoon in a magazine that showed a man and his wife sitting by their Christmas tree. He was holding a book in his lap saying to her, Honey, it's a nice gift, but I have mixed feelings about a leather-bound collection of my New Year's resolutions from the last 20 years. <laughs> you know, we've all gotten older, a year older, and there are plenty of funny stories about aging. I'll just entertain you with one. A man was telling his friend, I'm sure gotten old. I've had two bypass surgeries, a hip replacement, new knees, bought diabetes and I'm half blind. I take four different medications that make me dizzy, winded and subject to blackouts. I have bouts with dementia, poor circulation, hardly feel my hands and feet anymore. Can't remember if I'm 85 or 92. I have lost all my friends, but thank God I still have my driver's license. <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen to me one day. <laughs> it's gonna happen to me. My friends, what a year it has been. Wow. What a year it has been. <laughs> Who ever thought we would be on, I feel like I've been on a nonstop roller coaster. Oh my goodness, at a music park. And I, I've never really enjoyed roller coaster rides, especially the ones that flips you upside down and everything, because I get real sick to my stomach. Uh, but I mean, really, for the love of God, the stuff we've been through really has made me sick. And at times, it's, it has really stressed us all out. That's, there's been nothing fun about this past year. We can all agree on that. In fact, this past year tested our patience and our pocketbooks in a huge way. Now we have to gather up strength and face the uncertain future of 2021. Every new year, I always mention how significant it is that we begin the first day with a feast in honor of Mary. I cannot imagine going into an entirely new year without the assistance of the Virgin Mother of God. I really can't. Because Mary is our Heavenly Mother and he wants, she wants all of us to come to her. I always begin my day, and I've mentioned this before, with an act of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, in addition to the Sacred Heart of Jesus as well. I ask Jesus and Mary to watch over me and guide me through the course of the day. Mary has played a pivotal role in my priesthood, and especially this year that has tested me. This past year started on a positive note, and then it just went downhill rapidly with the COVID-19 lockdowns, and then the bout with the virus that I had in July. I can tell you, I was scared about getting the virus, and when I got it, it was, it was really nothing. I, I, I just... I'm very lucky and I, I count my blessings that the mother of God was with me to give me strength and um, but as I mentioned to you before it was not so much the physical sickness that bothered me it was the the the, uh, the psychological issue that really, that's what a lot of people do especially when you have to be quarantined and so many of you have told me how lonely and depressed you were when it happened to you so many challenges came my way and at one point I was so exhausted by the constant drama of problems that were put in my path that I just wanted to give up at one point. I really did, I just, you know, I just like, oh Lord, please. I, I would say things like, Lord, I just want to give up. 
I, you know, I'm tired of this. Dear Mother of God, I pleaded with the Mother of God to lift me back up and help me to face another day with hope and a smile. And somehow, Mary pulled me back to my senses. And I'm very grateful for that. And I love her dearly. And you know that. That's why I promote devotion to the Holy Rosary. The church has consistently proposed Mary, the mother of God, to be our mother and our helper in this life. This is one, as I mentioned, one of the four Marian dogmas of the church. It was declared a dogma at a gathering of bishops with the Pope's approval in the city of Ephesus. Now recall that the city of Ephesus, which is, was a city, it's in now in modern day Turkey, is a city that St. Paul wrote a letter to, an epistle. Okay? He appointed Timothy to be one of the first bishops of Ephesus, and he wrote a letter to Timothy, two letters to Timothy, and in it's called a pastoral epistle, and there he described to Timothy what he felt a bishop's responsibility should be. Okay? Now, there is another story attributed to Ephesus. It's not found in sacred scriptures or, or in the New Testament, but it comes from the sacred tradition of the church. And that is the story that at one point in Palestine, when a grave persecution broke out and Herod, another different Herod, was persecuting church, St. John the Apostle took the Blessed Mother and fled Palestine and went to Ephesus and there they went outside the city and settled in the hill country where Mary would live the remainder of her lives and it was there that she would experience what is called a dormition or falling asleep or death and then uh, three days later her body was assumed body and, body and soul assumed body and soul Jesus came to take his mother to heaven so Ephesus played a pivotal role and it would play a pivotal role in the year 431 AD at that time, the emperor was Theodosius II. Theodosius was urged to bring a convention or convening of bishops and priests along with two legates, a representative of the Pope. Pope Celestine was in Rome. He couldn't go to the gathering, but he sent representatives at that. The, the, the reason why this con convention was, uh, uh, took place in the city of Ephesus, because that's the place where Mary had been assumed, was to deal with an issue that regarded Mary's status. Was she or was she not the mother of God? A man by the name of Nestorius was spouting off saying, no, we can't call her the mother of God because that implies that she created God and God is uncreated being. God has no parent. God is uncreated being. Okay, we all, we all agree with that. But it was an honorary title. And so St. Cyril of Alexandria in Egypt Began, became so violently angry at, at uh, uh, this man because he said, how can you dare dispute this issue? Because Mary is indeed the mother of God. It's an honorary title. She is the Theotokos, a Greek word that means the God-bearer. She, in her womb, she had God in her womb, okay? But it was an honorary title. It did not imply that she created God. In fact, the Council of Ephesus not only affirms the title, the mother of God, Mater Dei in Latin, but it also affirmed the fact that Jesus had was one person, he was the second person of Trinity, he had two natures, a divine nature and human nature. Therefore, ergo, when Mary conceived Jesus in her womb, in her immaculate womb, she conceived the Godhead. It's just a it's an honorary time. It does not describe uh, the reality that, she's a, that she created God, okay? So that's very important. Protest by the way, the reformers of the, the 16th century, they all agreed with that. It is interesting, you know, Martin Luther, Calvin, they all agreed with that title. Okay, in the Catholic Church, it is, the reason why I mention it, it's so disconcerting to hear Catholics try to downplay the role of Mary in their faith. It's as though they think that devotion to Mary is somehow a distraction to Jesus. And yet for 2,000 years, brothers and sisters, the Catholic Church has always upheld the dignity of Mary and her role in salvation history. The saints of modern times have consistently stated that devotion to Mary is essential to entering the heavenly kingdom. Even the late John Paul II, now St. John Paul II the Great, took as his motto, what? Totus to us, a Latin word which means I'm totally yours, Mary. I'm totally yours. And consistently, 
many of his talks and, and, and cyclical things on Mary, what did he talk about? The role of Mary in history. The role of Mary in the church. As we begin a new year, let's not be blind to the fact that we may have to face some very challenging events in the history of our nation and maybe even in our own lives. People that we know and love now may not be around next year. Religious freedom could be curtailed. Our streets could be filled with greater anarchy. We could possibly face another pandemic. A health crisis could erupt in our own lives. However, however, having said that, no matter what may happen this coming year, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and Mary. Seriously. And be resolved to change our lives. God is inviting us every day to change your life. You talk about making resolutions and doing all this. Well, the one, the most important resolution is change your lives. Be reconciled with God. Stop fooling around with God. Stop playing, as I mentioned all the time, Russian roulette. And thinking you have the best of both worlds. Be converted to God. Be converted. Go, go to confession. Make a good confession. Go to Mass more frequently. If you're retired and you have time on your hand, go to Mass every day. Go to Adoration. Say the Holy Rosary every day. Say the Chapel of Divine Mercy and focus on trying to help other people. Stop focusing on yourself. Focus on the needs of the people around you. And I guarantee you, if you have a strong devotion to Mary and you give your life over to it, she will guide you through the course of these months and she'll help you to find peace and joy. That I can guarantee you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's now stand for the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of light, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Assured that we are always blessed with God's tender mercy, we ask now for his merciful response to our needs. For the church, that we may invoke God's blessings on those most in need, the poor, the vulnerable, the outcasts, the forgotten, let us pray to the Lord. Lord on this world day of peace, that all people may search their hearts and find a way to reject hate resentment and division and embrace peace so that violence is never again used against a fellow child of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For those without family, whether through death or estrangement, that they may realize their inclusion in God's family and find comfort in the Father's constant care, let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> For new mothers, that they may realize God's blessings in their infant children and may receive the care and support they need to handle their daunting responsibilities, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us, that we may choose to show mercy to those in need of forgiveness, those in need of support, and those in need of kindness, even when we find it challenging, especially when we find it challenging, let us pray to the Lord. For all precious human life from the safety of the mother's womb until natural death, let us pray to the Lord. 
for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us always pray for much needed hope. As we begin the new year, let us always never lose hope and keep our eyes focused on Jesus and Mary. We pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful God, you have blessed us throughout the ages. Continue to bless us as we make these prayers through the intercession of our Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Please be seated now for the offertory. And the Mass intention today, I think this evening, is for, um, <clears throat> it's for, in thanksgiving for the past year requested by Yang Kui. Sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and <clears throat> bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in his completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to bless and praise and glorify your name on the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, so through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you, heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim. Worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all of you created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to people, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Pope St. Uh, Sylvester I, whose feast day is today, and with all the saints on whose constant attention your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philippe, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, that they're passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through and bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord is now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace, Lord, be with you always. Amen. Let's share that peace now with one another. Peace be with you, peace be with you. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away sins, so blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my root, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion antiphon Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the 
body of Christ. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord, grant we pray that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church through Christ our Lord. Amen. So and my message to you is have hope, okay? That's all, that's all, that's all we have. We have hope the Mother God will lead us to this year, and I'm sure things will go according to God's plan, and we just have to say, Lord, thy will be done. Give me the strength. Give me the strength. Okay, so following the Mass, we, adoration will resume. We'll close the curtains there and expose the blood, unveil the second so you can continue adoration until late tonight. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass now is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.